hello everyone, it's Carrie, and I'm back here again with a really fun way to use dies. And this is gonna be a little bit different than normal, but today I'm using this giant trick-or-treat die from Heffy Doodle, and this is one of my favorite dies. This is the Sleepy Hollow die. It's got a frame, a tree, a haunted house, a spider, and a spider web. Today we're gonna to use the tree, and instead of using it as a tree, it's going to be a decorative element for our background. And I just love the, the way that this tree curls around. It's so beautiful. So we're going to do something similar, just like this. I'm trying to place those trees so I get the branches in a more decorative way. And we're going to just go ahead and glue those to the background. The cardstock that I'm using in the background is a pearlescent purple, and I just love the shine of it. You could use some mica mists or some sparkle shimmer spray to get a similar look. So I just used some liquid adhesive to put those trees down. I'm going to set that aside. And now I'm just going to glue together three of these trick or treat jumbo dies from heffy doodle and i love this die because there's a little spider already in there there's some bats as well it's a very unique die and it's nice and large so it will fill up a card just beautifully now i did think i was going to bring in the spiders from that stamp set that's off there to the left i ended up not adding it but i used another element to decorate this background up so you'll see that in just a second and I, as I glue these together, I'm gonna go ahead and allow that to dry before I do the next step with this die. And so I'm gonna set that aside. And meanwhile, from this Costume Critters stamp set, there are a couple of candy corns in there. And I wanna use those candy corns for this card today. So I'm gonna stamp a whole bunch of them. I'm just gonna move them around and keep stamping them all over the rest of this cardstock that I've got left over after using that die. Now, have you ever seen the candy corns that are purple and black and white? I think they're like blackberry cobbler flavored. I have never actually eaten one in my entire life, but I've seen them and they're so pretty and I thought it would be really fun with this card to do some purple, black and white candy corns. So I'm gonna test out these colors first. Before I color them all up, I'm just gonna try one. And I'm going to use N7, N5, and N3 for the bottom portion. That will be the black portion, but it will give it a little bit of contrast there between those colors, a little highlight. And then for the purple colors, I ended up trying out a dark V09, and then I went in with a V06, and then the VO4. So I'm using three shades of each to get the colors that I'm looking for. And then for the top portion, I'm just using uh, N1 and N0, I believe it was. And that's gonna look really good with that background. So I wanted to match the purples to the background and that looks pretty good right there. So now I'm gonna batch color these in that I'm going to use all of the N7s at once coloring all the bottom portion of each of the candy corns. Then I'm gonna go in with the N5s and color all of them again, and then the N3s. So it's a really fast, quick way to color up these candy corns when you batch color them like this. And they're a small enough image that it's very easy to still blend that out. So I wasn't worried about that at all. So now I'll go in with the purples and do the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of speed color through this and then I'll skip that. <laughs> I'll skip to the end so you're not watching me color all of them up but I just wanted to leave a little bit of this in so you could see how simple it is to just get this all colored up pretty quick. Now that we've got the coloring done I'm going to take the coordinating dies and tape them down to the candy corns and I'm going to just cut these all out using my mini Heffy Doodle die cut machine. I love this thing. I keep it right here next to my desk so I don't even have to get up <laughs> to die cut. It's, it's super simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of those out. I'll just kind of skip ahead, but look how cute these are. They're so little and sweet. And I'll just go ahead and there's all of them cut out now. I'll set that aside because now it's time to color up our sentiment. 
I'm taking those same candy corn colors that we used on the mini candy corns and I'm going to ink them onto this large jumbo die. I'm using the purple in the center. I'll use the gray on the top to just give it a little bit of color and then the black on the bottom portion. So it'll be similar to the way we colored up the candy corns. And I'm just using my Distress Oxide blenders. I have specific ones that I use only on oxide inks. And so these are the ones for my oxides only. And I'll use those to just add the color very quickly. And that's gonna be about perfect right there. I'm gonna just blend through with the purple one more time to get a good transition. And now I have a simple trick for you. And that is use a little piece of chipboard here or anything extra that you have lying around and then a little bit of glue that dries tacky. And when it dries tacky, put your die cut on there just nice and light. And this way it's going to make it so simple to add some embossing powder. I wanna add a lot of clear embossing powder to this now. And this is my ultra high embossing powder. As I put this on, I'm, I'm leaving this in because I had a little mishap. I tapped it against the paper and my die cut fell off. I couldn't get it attached again, so I just made another one real quick because there was already embossing powder all over my, my previous kind of handle that I made. So I made another one, and now I'm going to heat set the first layer of this embossing powder. Now, because it fell off, I did lose some of that embossing powder, so I'm gonna do two or three layers of this to get a really nice high gloss shine and that's gonna be super simple to do. I just waited till it was completely dry, added some more sticky ink, more of that embossing powder. This time I was really careful not to tap it against the paper, just kind of lightly tapping that off like that with my finger. And then sometimes it helps to heat it from the back first, especially if you're using the larger granules, and then melt it from the front. And that way you're gonna get less of those granules flying about, and it's a little easier to get that melted. So I'm gonna go ahead and melt this with my trusty, trusty heat tool here. I've had this heat tool for, I don't know, 15 years probably, and it's still going strong. I'm not gonna replace it till it completely dies on me too. <laughs> I love it. So I'll just go ahead and melt that, and what I noticed was there were a few areas that didn't get any of that embossing powder. So while it was still hot and wet, I added a little more of that powder and melted that. I'm gonna put the rest of it away before I melt it. That way I don't lose that. I'll melt that down. And this is really gonna make it pop. Now, I am leaving this in too because if this ever happens to you, you'll know what to do, but I there were a couple spots right there on the K that didn't get any, and my Versamark ink pad couldn't get into that spot because it was already ultra high. So I'm using my Versamarker here, and this is just a wet sticky marker just like the Versamark ink, only it's in a pen form. And I'm going to fill in the areas that I missed before, add some more of that powder, and then melt it. And then I got a really nice result from that. So to remove it from your temporary little holder here, just heat that up and while it's still warm, use your craft tool to remove that from the chipboard or cardstock. And then it will come off pretty good. And then it's ready to adhere to the card. So I'm just gonna trim off the excess trees from the edges. So we have a nice smooth edge and then I'm going to adhere that trick or treat with some liquid adhesive and I will use a acrylic block to hold that on as well so that it will stick down really nicely. I've got a couple different mixes here from Heffy Doodle. These are both beautiful. One is Hocus Pocus and one is the Royal Mist Sparkle Mix. I'll list those and link them below, down below. And I just used some of the purple gems and sequins to add to the background, along with those candy corns that we colored up earlier. 
And while that is all drying, I'm just going to go ahead and add those extra little pieces. And then we'll go ahead and attach that to the card base, just like so. And look what a fun decorative element those spooky trees are to this background. That candy corn mix looks really cool. And I just love that shine on the trick or treat. It makes it look like a really striking mm, decorative piece, I guess, because it's got all that shine. I hope you can see it here. I'm trying to hold it in the light so you can see that shine. It's really nice and thick, so it really feels substantial. It's a really great card and so much fun to use your dies in a different way to build a background. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up because it really does help me out. I'll be back real soon with more cards to share. Until then, happy, happy crafting, and I hope you're enjoying this season. I'm really looking forward to fall, Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving. It's one of my favorite times of year to do some crafting. So we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.